For the last 25 years, there's been a number of doctors and researchers who've ascribed to an idea that oral pathogens from periodontal disease were either a contributing factor or a sole cause of cardiovascular disease. I wanted to talk for a little bit about the history of that theory and where it has come forward 25 years until today. Uh, before that, my name is John Lorscheider. I'm a patient of PredMed and a follower of Dr. Brewer's YouTube channel. So the question has been raised by many people on Dr. Brewer's channel, do oral pathogens cause atherosclerosis? Uh, it gives way to the theory of infectious disease causes cardiovascular disease. Uh, I first became aware of it back in the late 90s by uh, Dr. Alan Shore. He was a pathologist in South Africa at the time. And what he found, there was a very high incidence rate of a particular bacteria, Chlamydia pneumoniae, embedded in the atherosclerotic plaques of the people that he autopsied. Uh, at that time, the plaque was thought to enter the body through the respiratory system, making its way through the bloodstream and winding up in the atheromas, uh, people's diseased heart arteries. Uh, Dr. Shore's work showed up in, at the time in a number of journals. Uh, the Journal of Infectious Disease uh, basically stated what I did, that they found an incidence rate, roughly 40 to 50 percent of these atheromas had the chlamydia and pneumonia. And it just went on to say that further research was needed and there was an association. Never did prove a cause. Um, other doctors, other, many, many articles out there uh, about chlamydia pneumonia and its, an, its association with forming uh, atherosclerotic plaque. But they all pretty much said the same thing. Uh, basically said there's an association here, we need to do some more research and so forth. Um, the bacteria showed up in some, but not all the plaques, roughly 40 to 50% incidence rate. Uh, showed an association, but unfortunately never showed a cause and effect relationship between infectious disease and cardiovascular disease. Uh, furthermore, it went on to show that even if you treated these people with the proper antibiotics to get rid of the chlamydia pneumonia, uh, there was no reduced cardiovascular events or mortality. Uh, the American Heart Association went on to say earlier that uh, periodontal disease is independently associated with cardiovascular disease, but there was no direct cause and effect from that on heart disease. <clears throat> Fast forward here 25 years and um, actually back up a minute, after Dr. Shore's research and the others, uh, it seemed to die off. You never heard much about that for almost 20 years. Um, until in 2016, there's new level A evidence uh, showing that periodontal disease is causal, meaning that it actually can cause cardiovascular disease. So what is level A evidence? Level A evidence is about the best you can get for your money. Level A evidence is basically randomized control trials. These are generally sizable trials. They're highly regulated and well-designed. They're peer-reviewed and uh, they come in two forms, the ones that are systematic reviews of control trials, and then there are individual trials. So if you can get a, a meta-analysis of a number of randomized control trials, that is considered the highest level of evidence you can get in medical research. Who did this research? This was done by three people, Dr. Bradley Bale, Dr. Amy Deneen, and uh, Dr. Vigorous from Vanderbilt University. If you have read the book, Beat the Heart Attack Gene, 
Dr. Bradley Bale and Dr. Amy Deneen uh, developed a systematic program of diagnosing and treating cardiovascular disease. Dr. Vigorist, he was involved with the medical school at Vanderbilt University. <clears throat> so, how'd they go about this? First, they had to satisfy the, the needs of the definition of causal. To be causal, to be considered causal uh, of cardiovascular disease, you have to meet three criteria. One is, you have to positively affect apolipoprotein B levels. That is your bad cholesterol, the sum of all the bad cholesterol particles in your body. Uh, how does it work? Uh, these oral pathogens take LDL and modify it by an enzyme called PLA2. And when that modification takes place, it increases the small dense LDL in our body. That's the highly atherogenic small dense particle that can easily penetrate an arterial wall. The second criteria that you have to meet in order to be considered causal for cardiovascular disease, you have to cause endothelial permeability. In other words, the single cell lining in our arteries called the endothelium has to be breached something has to damage that artery. What they found were that these pathogens generated that permeability as part of three things, a toxic, an immune, and an inflammatory response. And then the third criteria, once those small dense LDL particles, those ApoB particles made it into the artery wall, they had to be bound in the enema layer and they showed that that was done by the, the binding increased by increasing a substance called a proteoglycan inside the cellular matrix of the intima of the artery. <clears throat> so this research that they came out is published, I'll put the link in the footnotes of this video, very hard to read, it's very small print, but this is the research and it's been published now for some time. Uh, it's good reading. Uh, I enjoyed reading it, learned of some things I never knew. And now, what are these high risk pathogens? <clears throat> these are uh, five different ones that dentists typically will find in people's mouths with periodontal disease. Uh, there's ag Agrogatobacter, there's a uh, Porphyromonas gingivalis, Tanarella forsythia, Trepanoma denticola, Infuso bacterium nucleatum. And if I mispronounce those, please don't write in and tell me because I know I got some wrong. Uh, what they do know is that these bacteria are inflammatory. Uh, they're easily found in a dentist setting with periodontal cleanings, uh, normal dental exams by hygienists, uh, even with brushing and mastication, um, a lot of these bacteria can be verified. <clears throat> these bacteria, they enter through the mouth, travel through the bloodstream, make their ways into the atheromas of people's um, cardiovascular diseased arteries. Um, they know this for a fact. They verify these by in darterectomy specimens. In other words, if you have a carotid artery that's diseased and they remove or resection it or uh, stent it, whatever, they can sample that plaque in there and determine what bacteria are in there. And I think they did roughly 42 of these and they found in every one of them at least a minimum of one of these bacteria that I previously mentioned. Something to point out though, that these bacteria are not the sole cause of cardiovascular disease. They are one of many that are brought up in uh, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. That is the book that was written by Dr. Bale and Deneen. So now we know we've got five bacteria that are smoking guns. Uh, we know they can establish cardiovascular disease. 
how do we know that we have those? Uh, there are a specific test for them. Uh, one is called uh, Oral DNA. Uh, Oral DNA is a company who offers a test called My Periopath. I've had the test, it's very simple to do. Uh, you can have that done through your dentist. Uh, if you're a patient of PrevMed, that is one of the standard tests that they offer. Uh, I received a kit one day in the mail. Uh, you can uh, do it at home. It's an oral swish test. Basically, you drink a small bottle, but don't swallow it of an oral rinse. And you do that for roughly 30 seconds, goes back into the bottle. Uh, put it in a mailing envelope and you send it away. In about a week or so, you'll get a call from your doctor, like I did from PrevMed, uh, with my results. Based on those results, which look something like this, this happens to be my, my perio path for myself. Uh, these are the levels which are non-existent. I have no oral pathogens of that particular uh, high risk category. But then I have some moderate risk pathogens here, uh, but they're all below the threshold that are considered contributory to cardiovascular disease. So it's quantified. Uh, your dentist will share it to you. Um, if it is positive, the dentist will prescribe treatment. Uh, maybe periodontal treatment. If the gums are inflamed, uh, they will probably do periodontal uh, treatments for that individual and perhaps antibiotic treatment as well. Uh, what they have to do is uh, look at the specific bacteria that you have elevated levels are and find a, a specific antibiotic that uh, responds to it. It's a pretty standard procedure. Um, what they had to do when they established that this was an actual cause, they had to meet these three criteria that I mentioned. Over here, this is the traditional atherogenic triad. Basically, you have particles here, ApoB particles, your bad cholesterol. They penetrate the arterial wall. Uh, macrophages, basically white blood cells, create an immune response, causing inflammation build up a plaque in the arterial wall, which will set somebody up for a plaque rupture at some point, a blood clot, and possible myocardial infarction. But the myperiopath, uh, the periodontal pathogen impact is slightly different. Basically, you have um, your ApoB particles over here in your bloodstream. Uh, they're modified by the PLA2 enzyme. They convert those LDL particles into the small dense LDL, which are easily penetrated in the arterial wall. And then down here, we, again, we see the macrophages, the white blood cells coming to the rescue in an immune response. And basically, you get the same net result. You get plaque buildup in the artery wall, uh, setting somebody up down the road for a potential event. The American Heart Association said earlier, back in the 90s and uh, years earlier, that now, because there wasn't sufficient evidence to show that these oral pathogens are causal in cardiovascular disease, this new research, I'm sure, is being submitted back to the American Heart Association uh, to get their uh, recommendations and their approval. But in the meantime, people are walking around with, you know, oral pathogens in their mouth, and it's something relatively simple to address and fix. Um, definitely have your dentist take a look for it. Uh, they can order the test from uh, oral DNA and it may help prevent a heart attack and cardiovascular disease development down the road. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.